You know, I kind of get that this is like the third or the fourth video we've made about this trade, but I gotta go keeping up with the scoops, man. This has been such a big story and such a big turning point in the Montreal Canadiens organization that the gifts just keep on coming. And at the same time, the gifts are coming on the other side as well. So I think making a video like this, even though it's like the third or fourth time we're even mentioning this trade on the channel, I think it's perfectly justifiable, especially considering the new context we have of the players we're talking about. So let's talk about this two years ago. Two years ago in September of 2018, yeah. That literally was two years ago. It's September 2020. The Montreal Canadiens traded their captain, Max Pacioretty, to the Vegas Golden Knights. Can you believe that? The Vegas Golden Knights just came off of a Stanley Cup Finals appearance where they lost to the Washington Capitals. And after making the finals, they got Pacioretty after. And in that trade... Thomas Tatar was sent over back to Montreal as the return, along with Nick Suzuki and the 50th overall pick, which was in the second round. This pick was actually Columbus's pick. It was acquired by the Vegas Golden Knights in the David Clarkson-William Carlson trade. Not really trade, but kind of transaction, I guess is the better word to use. So Vegas had this extra second round pick lying around. They threw it in there as well. So the ultimate trade was Tatar, Suzuki, and the second round pick in exchange for Pacioretty. They also signed Max Pacioretty to a four-year contract extension immediately after that trade was made as well. And immediately, Montreal Canadiens fans were kind of like, okay, that's cool. We traded away Pacioretty. Awesome. We got assets back. We're a young team. It's 2018. We still don't know how good this team is going to be in the future. And Max Pacioretty, we love you, buddy. You've been great to us, but... The idea of really good prospects and a younger Tatar coming back sounds great, too. So... Oui, au revoir, mon capitaine. And eventually, you know, Vegas fans were like, awesome, we just got Pacioretty after trading a first, a second, and a third for Thomas Tatar, who didn't really do all too well with us, and we traded him and Suzuki for another guy who should probably replace Tatar in the top six. Okay, hopefully this actually works out a lot better, because Thomas Tatar, when he was acquired by Vegas, he wasn't really all too great with them in the playoffs. Sure, I get that he was good with Detroit, and it certainly was a very good asset to acquire. It's just the price was kind of high, and eventually it didn't work out, so you traded him away immediately with some other assets. Vegas was in win-now mode, and it really did show off. Well, let's take a look at things two years later, because two years later, we're coming off of some very interesting situations from both of these teams. Right now, Nick Suzuki, Thomas Tatar, and that second round pick have all combined towards adding different amounts of value to the Montreal Canadiens today, as well as the Montreal Canadiens going into the long-term future. The second round pick, first and foremost, let's get that out of the way. The Canadians actually traded that pick away. They traded that pick they acquired from Vegas to move down in the draft, and they used the new draft pick that they got in the third round to select Matthias Norlander, who is one of the best Moto young guys to ever play for that organization, according to Moto people who have their say in the media. He's been a very, very good, effective top four potential NHL prospect, and even though he was an undrafted guy in his first year being drafted in his second year of eligibility, this guy has been absolutely crazy in terms of being able to control offensive play in the Allsvenskan, being able to be reliable as one of the top guys on a pro hockey team, and he's looking to be one of the better Montreal Canadiens left-handed defenseman prospects. And if you know the Canadiens' depth situation, you know how valuable that is. Next up in the trade, you have Thomas Tatar, a 29-year-old today, but back then he was 27. He's getting paid $4.8 million until the end of next season. And this most recent season with the Montreal Canadiens, Thomas Tatar was just under a point per game. In fact, he led the team in goals, and he led the team in assists, and he led the team in points. He was very good, needless to say. He's been a very consistent top-line producer, a sniper who can get offense on the rush, and he's been a very, very welcomed addition to the Montreal Canadiens fandom, especially with the whole ta thing coming out, which was funny, but 
kind of weird at the same time. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Tatar meme, it's just kind of weird. And I think that's hard to disagree with, but you get the point. He's a good player, he's been on this team for a while, and even though today there's some concern as to whether or not Mark Bergevin is going to trade Thomas Tatar, keep him for the long term, re-sign him to a contract after this year is done, or just play it out and wait it out, there's no doubt that Thomas Tatar has provided value to the team offensively that is similar to, if not better, than what Pacioretty was able to do when he was here. 60-point seasons were the norm for Pacioretty when he was in Montreal, and Thomas Tatar is coming off of a 61-point season in 68 games. Last season, he was just under that 60-point mark, too. And finally, how can I forget the biggest piece of this Thomas Tatar Pacioretty second round pick trade is Nick Suzuki, a guy who was drafted all the way back in the 2017 NHL entry draft, the very second NHL draft prospect that the Vegas Golden Knights ever selected. The first one was Cody Glass at 6th overall. Suzuki was drafted 13th overall, and back when the trade was made, he was just another prospect sticking around in the OHL. Well, he actually did incredibly well in the OHL that season. He got all these awards, he improved his two-way play, he scored all these points, and playing for the Canadians this past season, as a young guy, as a rookie, he had 41 points in 71 games, but that's not all, because that's not even the best part. In the playoffs, this is where Nick Suzuki really showed off that he can be a number one, number two center on this team already. Now, to be clear, that's not me saying that he would be a number one center on any NHL team, just in terms of what the Canadians have on this team already, with Philippe Deneau, who is a very good player, and Jesperi Kotkaniemi, who also improved as the playoffs went on. Nick Suzuki was already one of, if not the absolute best centers on the team. And as a guy who just kept on finding ways to score goal after goal after disallowed goal after goal against Philly and against Pittsburgh, this guy was showing off that he can be very legit and he's only 21 years old. So, from the perspective of Max Pacioretty was replaced by a guy who can get equal production in Tatar, the fact that you have a prospect in Matthias Norlander who is so good, and the fact that you have a young guy in Suzuki who is absolutely incredible, from the Montreal Canadiens' point of view, they totally have a win scenario out of this trade. And from the Vegas Golden Knights' point of view, even though they coughed up some assets to shell out for Max Pacioretty, what they got is a player who helps out their team in the now, which is what they want. They wanted to go for short-term success, hey, they got it. Pacioretty led the Vegas Golden Knights in goals and points this season, and he was second in overall team assist scoring. And in the postseason at the moment, he's got five goals in nine games played. It says eight games played, but the Canucks just beat the Golden Knights right now, so it should be at nine games played. But Pacioretty has actually matched his goal production in the playoffs with the Montreal Canadiens in literally only two seasons worth of gameplay with the Vegas Golden Knights. Pacioretty played years with the Canadiens. He played 38 Montreal Canadiens playoff games, and he only had 10 goals. 38 games! And this guy goes over to Vegas, and all of a sudden, in 15 games played, which is now 16, but he was at the mark earlier at 15 games played, he's already matched that. He's got 10 goals in these Vegas Golden Knights playoff games. And being the highest productive offensive player on your entire squad certainly is not a bad bet either. And the goals for each of these teams align perfectly, because we know the Golden Knights want to win now. It's why they're the cup favorites this year. Mark Stone, Pacioretty, Riley Smith, Marcia So, Shea Theodore, the insurance and net with Marc-Andre Fleury just adding and doubling down with Robin Lehner too. They want to win the cup now. And if Max Pacioretty helps them do that, then hey, who cares if they got rid of Tatar and Suzuki, who is really good, and they got rid of that draft pick that eventually became Matthias Norlander after some trading down, it doesn't matter, they got a cup. So, this trade, the Pacioretty trade, so far, even though I could fairly say that the Montreal Canadiens have had more benefit out of this trade than the Vegas Golden Knights have had, I think just the way it is right now, this has been a win-win trade. Both teams involved are extraordinarily happy with how these assets are playing. Montreal fans are revering Nick Suzuki. They're praising Thomas Tatar for his offensive production, and they're awing at the potential of a Matthias Norlander. And Vegas Golden Knights fans are getting the best that Max Pacioretty has ever given out in the NHL. And that is certainly valuable as well.
So talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea. Is it a win-win for you? Is it a lose-lose? Is it a win-lose? Who wins, who loses? In my opinion, the Canadians win a little bit more, but the Vegas Golden Knights have still won quite a bit. Tell me in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. So that's Ross 99. And bye. <laughs>